If your patient with diabetes has an upcoming surgery, hospitalization, or procedure, there's some special precautions that they need to take beforehand that you can help them prepare for. The reality is it's not uncommon for anesthesiologists, surgeons, and other healthcare professionals to have limited knowledge about diabetes management or even know the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So today we're going to talk about how you can help your patients be prepared with the right information to take to their medical team at the hospital. I'm Dr. Steve Edelman. I'm Dr. Trisha Santos. And we are taking control of your diabetes. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Edelman, and this is my colleague, Dr. Tricia Santos, who's also an endocrinologist at UCSD, and she spends a major part of her day taking care of people with diabetes who are hospitalized. And today we're gonna to give you some tips of what to educate your patients on before they get into the hospital for any type of procedure or surgery. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, Steve. I think this is such an important topic because, you know, we all want to keep our patients safe when they come to the hospital. And it's kind of a risky time if you have diabetes. Absolutely. And it's nice that you can specialize in this as well. For sure. So let's jump right into it. Um, I want to give you some ideas of kind of some of the highlights of what I think are the most important things to review with your patients before they go to the hospital or in for a procedure. So first of all is reviewing their current medication list for all of their diabetes medications. Um, this is really important for healthcare providers because there are different rules for each of the classes of diabetes medications about how long you have to stop them before you're not going to be eating, for example, or before a procedure. You know, for example, SGLT2 inhibitors, many people don't know that you have to hold them three days before. Um, so that can decrease your risk of things like DKA, et cetera. Um, one website that I find really helpful is, uh, we'll put it up here for you, it's UCSF LogicNet's website, and it's a computer tool that allows you to enter in all of the meds that your patients are taking for diabetes, and it spits out beautiful instructions on what to do up to a week before the procedure. It's really helpful to keep your patients safe. With all these new classes of medications, it's getting complicated. In yeah. the olden days, we just stopped metformin the day of, right. but GLP-1s are supposed to be stopped. SGLT2s, and then if your patient's on insulin, there's insulin adjustments that you need to do, especially basal. Right, and this website really takes a lot of the work out of that for you uh, as a healthcare prov provider. I use it all the time at UCSC. We use it before all of our surgeries, so I highly recommend it. Okay, the second thing I recommend is that you go over with your patients how important it is for them to bring an accurate and complete medication list to the hospital. So this includes an accurate dose of what type of, of how much insulin they're taking. For example, if the you know prescription says that a patient's taking 75 units of insulin, but they're not really taking it or not taking it all that often, we need to know that in the hospital because we don't want them to get accidentally started on their home dose of insulin, which could be very dangerous in a situation where they're not eating or where their diet is different or where they're sick. Yeah, extremely important. And even a list of all the supplements they may be taking too, because th sometimes that'll have some interactions that the anesthesiologist or the medical professionals don't want. Now, along these lines, if you have any patients with type 1 diabetes, it's very important to actually critical to remember never to stop their basal insulin. So this means either their basal insulin injection that they're taking or insulin that they're using through a pump. Um, those patients, we have seen them come into the hospital where they've been told to hold the insulin and unfortunately they're in DKA by the time they get to us. That happens more than you think. You know, with yeah. people taking shots, you know, it's typically 20, 30% reduction the day before. And if they're on a hybrid closed loop system, it's really easy. You have them put it on exercise mode when they go to bed or a level that they're gonna come in at 140 to 150. Right. So it, it's gotten easier in that regard thanks to these hybrid closed loop systems. Right, now along those lines, if you have patients who are wearing continuous glucose monitors or who are using insulin pumps, if they have a scheduled procedure or surgery or hospitalization, I would recommend they look into what the policy is at that hospital. Many hospitals nowadays will allow you to continue to wear your CGM in the hospital. They'll allow you to continue to wear your insulin pumps in the hospital, but you really wanna know what the procedures are and then tell the patients to also bring those supplies because oh. the hospital will not have those supplies for them. There's no way I'm taking off my CGM for anybody. <laughs> and if they wanna prick my finger, fine. But uh, Trisha's right, uh, tell your patients to bring all their supplies. And sometimes 
it comes in handy, especially when you want to know what your blood sugar is. And they've, the doctor's written orders, test blood sugar four times a day. And they typically test it at weird times that yeah. aren't in relation to your meals if you're eating at that time. Okay, the next thing, which is a little bit, you, you may not think of this, but I think it's nice for patients to understand how we do things in the hospital. So our blood glucose ranges in the hospital may be a little bit different than what they're used to. We like them between 100 and 180 in the hospital. Some people, this feels too low. Some people, this feels too high, and it can be upsetting if they're not aware of it. And the other thing is, let your patients know that we primarily use insulin in the hospital. That's a shock to a lot of people. Some people think, gosh, if I'm on insulin in the hospital, does that mean I'm never coming off of insulin? And the answer is no. But just kind of knowing that ahead of time can really ease people's minds. Yeah, and it depends on the procedure because that way the, the anesthesiologists, the surgeons uh, have tight control of your blood sugar. They put it where they want it. And typically, wouldn't you say this is true when... Patients leave a hospital, they're typically on what they come Usually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's important, especially, uh, you know, patients with diabetes where they're giving up their control with their own system, their pump and CGM, and they're letting the hospitalists take care of their diabetes. And that's probably because they're going under anesthesia right. and they're out of it and they won't be able to make their own adjustments. And then the last thing I would finish up with saying is just, you know, your patients should really be advocates for themselves when they go to the hospital. Um, diabetes, as you know, as a healthcare provider, is very hard to keep up with these days. Things are changing all the time. There's new medications. Um, and patients really need to advocate for themselves while they're there because it's often the case that they or you as their healthcare provider may know more about diabetes than some of the people taking care of them. That is absolutely true. Ask questions, find out what they're doing to you and why, and try to be nice about it. How do you help your patients prepare for hospitalization? What kind of checklist do you give them? Let us know in the comments. Thank you, Tricia, for being here and educating all of us healthcare professionals. And we'll see you in the next one.